يتقربون إلى المليك بفعلهم طاعاته والترك للعصيان فعل الفرائض والنوافل دأبهم مع رؤية التقصير والنقصان صبر النفوس على المكاره كلها شوقا إلى ما فيه من إحسان نزلوا بمنزلة الرضا فهم بها قد أصبحوا في جنة وأمان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم dear brothers and sisters and welcome back to our series on the poem السير إلى الله والدار الآخرة the path of the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the home of the hereafter by the great Imam Imam al-Sa'di rahimuhullahi ta'ala Today we have reached the sixth line. But before we begin with the new line or with the new verse, we'd like to quickly recap the important stations or qualities we mentioned in our previous lesson. And they were the qualities and the stations of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based upon love, fear and hope. And we also spoke about the importance of dhikr, that the true seeker, the true traveller, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times and in all situations and in all places whether in secret or in private or in public or in the open in other words now the sheikh in line or verse number six speaks about the importance of seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through acts of obedience and also by avoiding and abandoning disobedience to him. He says, Rahimuhullah, يتقربون إلى المليك بفعلهم طاعته والترك للعصيان They seek closeness to the king, the owner, by their actions, by obeying him and by forsaking disobedience or by actions of obedience and abandoning disobedience. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying him and abandoning his disobedience. Imam Sa'di mentions in his commentary on these lines, performing these acts of obedience, especially the obligatory ones, and leaving the sinful ones, draws one closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leads to him, meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Hadith al-Qudsi, it states that Allah says, My servant does not draw closer to me with anything more beloved to me than the obligatory duties that I have enjoined upon him. My servant continues to draw closer to me by performing optional deeds until I love him. So my dear brothers and sisters, we will never draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we don't perform the obligatory actions that he has commanded us with first. And the greatest obligation is the obligation of Tawheed, to worship Allah alone subhanahu wa ta'ala and to shun and reject and abandon shirk, kufr, or association of partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disbelief in Allah. And then by also carrying out the most important of the obligations, starting off with the five pillars of Islam, the prayer, the zakat, the hajj, and the fasting of the month of Ramadan. My dear brothers and sisters, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by carrying out all the obligations and leaving off disobedience to Him also necessitates being sincere and adhering to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that which he said, performed and that which he agreed to in his presence. Indeed, obedience to the messenger of Allah is obedience to Allah. The lawful and unlawful matters are clear and between them are doubtful matters. As is mentioned in the authentic hadith, whoever keeps away from the doubtful matters is free from blame from Allah in terms of his religion and free from blame in terms of the people, such that they will not speak about him. Now the Shaykh continued on this point in the next line, as he says in his commentary, due to this, I said, meaning he said in verse or line number seven, Doing what is obligatory and optional is their way, inspecting their own faults and their deficiencies. Or in other words, Yes, they perform the obligatory and the voluntary deeds. This is their way, this is their habit, while seeing and inspecting their shortcomings in themselves. 
So the way of the true believer, my dear brothers and sisters, on his journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, as we mentioned previously, to fulfill the obligatory duties first and then by increasing in performing optional deeds whilst at the same time seeing oneself as being deficient. So striving to do good actions eliminates laziness from oneself whilst inspecting one's shortcomings dispels or keeps them away from self-amazement which would corrupt or nullify and spoil one's actions. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, I heard Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah say, the one who knows Allah sees himself as having no right over anyone, nor deems himself as being more virtuous than anyone. This is why he does not reproach, demand or harm. So my dear brothers and sisters, performing the obligatory and the optional will keep us firm and will keep us far away from laziness. Whilst recognizing our shortcomings and therefore trying to fix them will keep us away from self-amazement. And this is from the perfection of the believer in that he sees himself as lacking, as falling short. Sheikh then moves on in line or verse number 8 and says, صبر النفوس على المكاره كلها شوقا إلى ما فيه من إحسان They train their souls to show patience over all dislikable things, yearning to reap what it contains of righteousness. This line, my dear brothers and sisters, speaks about patience, الصبر. And as we know, الصبر in the Arabic language means to withhold, الحبس, to refrain. And as the Shaykh says in his commentary, Rahimahullah, patience is to restrict one's soul away from what the person dislikes, if at the same time it includes pleasing the most merciful, or when doing so, includes pleasing the most merciful. Patience, my dear brothers and sisters, is of three types. Patience upon the obedience of Allah until he fulfills it. Patience to stay away from the disobedience of Allah until he leaves it and patience upon the decree of Allah regarding those affairs that include hardship and difficulty. My dear brothers and sisters, life is a test, so we need to be patient in all that we face. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, Al-Junaid said, The journey from this world to the hereafter is smooth and easy for the believer, but leaving ordinary life for the sake of Allah is difficult. The journey from the ego or the nafs to Allah is extremely difficult and patience or sabr in Allah is even more difficult. He was asked about patience, so he replied, it is to swallow bitterness without frowning. Dhunnun al-Misri said, patience is to distance yourself from opposing the truth, to remain calm when engulfed with calamities and to display sufficiency when poverty occupies your daily life. It has been said, patience is to face affliction with the best conduct. It has been said, it is to absorb affliction without displaying complaint. It is also said, it is accustoming the soul to the onslaught of adversities. It is said, it is to settle down with adversities in good companionship in the same manner as one settles down with well-being. And Amr bin Uthman said, It is standing firm with Allah and meeting tribulations with generosity and welcome. My dear brothers and sisters, there are many ayat and ahadith about those who are patient. From them is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu sta'inu bis sabri was salah inna allaha ma'as sabirin. O believers, see comfort in patience and prayer. Allah is truly with those who are patient. Then the Shaykh moves on in the next verse or line, in line number nine, to speak about the station of contentment. He says, Rahimahullah. They arrive at the station of contentment, or they fulfill the level of Allah's pleasure, and by way of that, ultimately reaching the Jannah or the Paradise or the Garden, and thereby attaining safety, security and protection. My dear brothers and sisters, as the Sheikh mentions in his commentary, the station or level of being pleased with Allah or having Rida is higher or loftier than that of patience. Because patience is keeping the soul restrained and restricted from what it dislikes whilst there is a struggle. However, with the pleasure of Allah being sought, the struggle is eased. He is pleased with Allah with contentment 
and his heart is pleased and tranquil in fulfilling good deeds and is patient in keeping away from his disobedience. Rather, it is possible the person even enjoys the hardships whilst knowing it is for Allah as others may enjoy having their hopes fulfilled. If the servant reaches this level, his life becomes good and at ease, leading his eyes to be satisfied, meaning he will be content. This is why being pleased in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despite hardships is called the paradise of this world and the resting place of the worshippers. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah he said this is why contentment or rida is one of the greatest gateways to Allah. It is the paradise of the world, a state of rest or a state of calmness for those who know Allah, a life for the lovers, a delight for the worshippers, and a coolness of the eye to the yearners. My dear brothers and sisters, whoever is content with Allah, Allah is content with him. Whoever is content with simple provisions from Allah, Allah is content with simple actions from him. The reality behind contentment is to receive Allah's religious commands and his all-embracing decree with an open heart and a cheerful soul without resentment or anger and displeasure. So my dear brothers and sisters, to summarize and conclude what we took in today's lesson, we spoke about the importance of drawing near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the sovereign, the master, the owner of everything. And the only way to draw near to him subhanahu wa ta'ala is by fulfilling his obligations, by obeying him and forsaking disobedience. And whilst we do this, we have to have this self-inspection, self-reflection, in that we have faults, we have shortcomings, therefore we shouldn't fall into self-amazement and be proud which may corrupt our actions and render them futile. And we also spoke about the important station and quality of sabr, patience, and that we have to put up in life with a lot of things we may dislike. Therefore, we are required to be patient. And we said that patience is of three types. Patience upon what Allah has commanded, patience on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited, and patience upon whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees. And finally, we spoke about the station of contentment, the quality of rida, and that rida is to be content when receiving and carrying out Allah's command subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be happy and not resent it or feel any displeasure or anger towards what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for you in this life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to instill in us the great qualities of patience and the higher quality of rida or contentment and also that Allah allows us to be from those who carry out the obligations and keep drawing nearer to him with the voluntary until we are from those whom he loves subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. تقربون إلى المليك بفعلهم طاعته والترك للعصيان فعل الفرائض والنوافل دأبهم مع رؤية التقصير والنقصان صبر النفوس على المكاره كلها شوقا إلى ما فيه من إحسان نزلوا بمنزلة الرضا فهموا بها قد أصبحوا في جنة وأمان